Everyone knows mm-hmm. Jaws is amazing. And it's still, it's still great to talk about why Jaws is amazing. Uh, Jaws 2 and 3 are, are pretty mediocre. They're, they're bad, but they're bad in a really boring way. But Jaws the Revenge... Jaws the Revenge is unlike any other bad movie. Instinctively, man has always been drawn to the sea. Its beauty... Its mystery, its secrets. But there is also a vague uncertainty, a sense of intrusion into an alien world where man is unwelcome and completely at the mercy of the most terrifying predator on earth. Man's deepest fear has risen again. Jaws, the revenge. This time, it's personal. I can think of one bad movie it's like, but we'll get to that. Okay. Hello. Welcome to the Waffle Press Movie Podcast. I'm your host, Diego Crespo. I'm getting over a really bad cold, so if I sound a little nasally, that's why. Uh, with me today to help complete the Jaws retrospective for Shark Week, Matt Garingo. Matt, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm Matt Garingo, and I've always wanted to make love to an angry welder. Is is that is that an actual line? <laughs> Jaws four. I wrote down some quotes from the movie because. Okay, holy oh, shit. That's, <laughs> that's when he. That's when he goes into. Uh, he goes to talk to his wife, right? That's when Mike goes to talk to his wife. Well, that's when they have, like, a fight. Yeah. Like, they have, like, a big-ass fight over the some, over him not taking the garbage out. And, like, and then it just kind of ends. And it was trying to be, like, cutesy, kind of like, you know, oh, couples sometimes fight, but, like, it was way too aggressive. Yeah. Um, I, I wrote down a couple, too, but mine are all from the kid. Mike's kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that, let's get let's look back really quick at the Jaws retrospective. Um, so Jaws one, amazing. Your favorite movie of all said. time. Favorite movie of all time. Yeah, one of the best movies ever made, without a doubt. Jaws two, really generic sequel, mm-hmm. but I think, as generic as it can possibly be, honestly. Yeah. Uh, for in terms of like a slasher movie, though, I think it could do a lot worse. You could also do way fucking better. And yes. Jaws 3D is, is bad, but it's not offensively bad. It's just kind of boring bad and mm. hilarious at times. Only at times, though. Yeah. Um, and if you were going to remake any, like, Jaws movie, I think you should remake Jaws 3D and just make it a fucking really schlocky slasher movie. Yes. Just make it, like, super f- fucking funny and, like, satirical. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jaws the Revenge is is a special sort of bad. Jaws the Revenge is is untapped potential bad. Yeah. Jaws the Revenge is about a shark that wants revenge on the Brody family. Yeah. And someone actually wrote that down and said, yeah, that makes sense. And, and I, I found out it, a, a little bit of production history before this. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like the, yesterday, before the day of recording, that apparently in the novelization of Jaws the Revenge, and I don't know if it was in the original script, I think it might have gotten cut, but there was a voodoo witch doctor. Yes. Who used voodoo, and they, they wanted revenge on the Brody family, and the shark was the tool to achieve those means, which is also amazing. Yes. Yeah, there's a voodoo. There was the novelization. I don't know why, but this a witch doctor had some sort of vendetta against the Brody family, and was sending sharks after him. That that's what explains the whole series, basically. And I think it, it was in the original script, only because when I was rewatching it recently, um, Mike Brody does say to his mother, like something along the lines of, "Do you really believe in this voodoo nonsense?" Yep. Which, which to me hints that at one point this idea was in the script. Don't know what the fuck happened, but someone said that's a little... It, the shark can want revenge, but it can't be a voodoo curse. That's where it crosses the line. So, what the fuck? 
Well, I want to talk about because like the badness of Jaws Four is kind of legendary, and I gotta say, I think really the there, there's a lot of bad stuff in it, but it only completely goes off the rails in like the last like twenty minutes. Oh, it's amazing! Like the last twenty minutes of this movie are fucking baffling. That like it's almost like they just ran out of time to make the movie. But I want to say honestly, watching this, rewatching this after going through all the Jaws films in a row, the opening to this movie isn't bad, and it looks better than Jaws two and Jaws three. They had some decent cinematography on this movie. They totally did. The AMC like they they redid. They, they, they made it look better. They fucking, what do, what do they call that? Fucking remaster? Thank you. God know. damn it. They remastered <laughs> it. And the remaster looks really good. It makes the effects look really bad. But the remaster is really nice to look at. Yeah. Oh, no. The, effect, the effects are atrocious, but nothing could cover that up, really. Yeah. Um, but but I, I really think the opening of this movie, other than the goofy premise of, you know, the shark wants revenge. Like, the shark literally lays a trap in the opening of the movie. He, like, knocks over a buoy, so uh, the one Brody kid, um, Sean, has to go out and get it, and then Sean gets killed and gets his arm ripped off, and is kind of like, what? When his arm gets ripped off. <laughs> um, but other than the attack itself, which is a really shitty attempt at, like, being... Like, it's just a lot of, like, it's, they think a lot of cuts will make it seem intense, and it just looks like a lot of weird edits. But, honestly, I think the setup, and being on Amity, and it's like, and instead of summer, it's winter, which kind of gives it an interesting feel. Like, I would say the first ten minutes of this movie are, like, a solid opening. And better than anything to come out of the last two Jaws movies. Uh, I don't know. I really like the goofiness of the burnt shark in Jaws 2. Mm. Like, it, it's such a try-hard attempt at making that, like, scarier that, like... It, yeah. It, it doesn't work, but in the sense that it doesn't work, kind of works for me. Like, it's well, just I'm, like, I'm, oh, you're funny. But, I'm uh, talking straight up. I really think that the opening of this movie is fine. Like, I really think if you sat people down and were like, oh, this is, like, one of the worst movies ever, if they watched the opening and they'd be like, I don't get why everyone hates this movie. Or why everyone thinks it's so stupid. And then you get about 20 more minutes in and you start realizing that Alan Brody has like psychic powers, <laughs> and uh, then people start going, "Oh, okay." <laughs> um, I guess um, we should say this movie. Fo- the main character of this movie is Alan Brody, um, yeah. who was uh, Chief Brody's wife, uh, played by Lorraine Gary in all the movies, um, and she was Sid Sheinberg, the head of Universal's wife. Um. So there's a lot of talk about how he kind of forced this movie through to give his wife a starring role in a profitable movie. Yeah. And the le- and she hadn't made a movie when this came out, she hadn't been in a movie for 8 years. Oh my. Yeah, her last movie was Steven Spielberg's 1941. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, well uh he wanted to give her a bigger part in Jaws 2, right? Yeah, he kept trying to force her into scenes. Like, he wanted her to go out on the boat with Brody, and the director basically said, fuck that. <laughs> like, like, th- like, the first director got fired because he wouldn't do it, and then the second director, like, like tried to, said he would quit if they forced him to do it, and they, they couldn't really afford to lose him, so they just didn't do that. There's a weird compromise where she's on the boat with him in the beginning, but then they separate hmm. at some point. So that's what ended up happening in Jaws 2. Um, and no offense... To Lorraine Gary, but she's not good. Uh, she has to carry this movie, and she has to go through a lot of goofy emotions, <laughs> and she just can't do it. Like I don't know if any actor really could, but she definitely couldn't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think she's that bad. But uh, in in Jaws too, in Jaws, I think Spielberg can get at least a moderately good performance out of almost anyone in his movies. Yeah. Like you can tell when someone's not up to the Spielberg task, but mm. she, I think she, she does fine. And then in this movie, she's just so wrong yeah. to put as a lead character. And yeah, no one could really go through these kind of motions. Mm. But I mean, poor lady. 
having the star in this. Yeah. Oh my well, she's, god. Like early on, when she's supposed to be going through the death of her son, and it seems like everyone is trying to get her to do as many traumatic things as possible in a row. <laughs> like, hey, let's go on the ferry. <laughs> <laughs> And she kind of, she's supposed to have like an emotional breakdown on the ferry. And it's just, it's just really awkward. Like, it's not really like, you don't like feel bad for you. Just like, yeah, this is an awkward moment. It'd be like if it was a real moment, mostly. Like if you were really hanging out with people and someone just started sobbing uncontrollably. <laughs> and you just be like, this is awkward. <laughs> um, and she's convinced bad. from the beginning of this movie that the sharks are after them. She knows. Mm-hmm. And she says that they killed Chief Brody, and that that's but he's had a heart attack since the second movie. But she says that it was the fear of the sharks that brought about his heart attack. So, <laughs> and also they offered, they wanted to get uh, Roy Scheider to come back for a cameo, and he would have been the person that died in the opening <sighs> instead of Sean. That's that would have pissed me off even more because yeah I know you're saying the opening's like oh it's fine yeah, I guess it is like it, it's it's filmed okay and the kid who dies is really bad um mm-hmm. he's screaming he's like ah! Ah! Uh, yeah it, it, he's pretty bad um but it felt like just ugly like here's like this really charming heartwarming family that we got to know in the first Jaws movie and they're, they're still likable enough in the second movie. And it's just like watching that happen. It feels very cheap. It feels really cheap and and ugly to me. So seeing that happen to Chief Brody, a character that I do actually care about, mm. that that would have pissed me off. I think. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying I wanted that. I'm just saying yeah. that. that, that also, like you have to remember that this the the person that dies is the kid who did the is is supposed to be the adult of the kid who did the funny like faces. Yeah. In the so that kid's dead now. <laughs> Yep, that see that's that's so fucked up. It is so weird, but uh, but it, I'll be honest. At this point, I don't think anyone has that much emotion attached to these characters. I mean, the, forcing the Brody kids into all the sequels was kind of bad, like in general. Mm-hmm. It was never they. I was never really rooting for any of them or cared what happened to any of them. So it's just like a weird coincidence that it keeps happening to the Brody family. What a fucking movie! Yeah, <laughs> no, it's well. I mean, we're the 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 hilarious thing to me is, uh, so that like the mother's all fucked up. She's convinced the sharks are after them, and they're like, "Mom, you can't stay here at the at the beach because it'll break. It'll just bring back too many memories." So let's go to the Bahamas. <laughs> let's go to an island. Another one. Just it's it's further south. And uh, he's like, don't worry, great whites don't go there, which isn't true. Great whites pretty much go anywhere except, like, the Arctic. It's just they're not usually in the Bahamas. So it's enti- So it's just, like, fucking take her to Kansas. Like, take her anywhere where, the, like, a landlocked state. Just get the fuck away from the ocean. And I mean, and from the moment she's in the Bahamas, she's all fucked up whenever anyone goes near the water. So, this idea of like her getting away from her problems is completely idiotic. It's, it is like every bad decision that could have been made was made. Yeah. In like the writing of this movie. And it's, oh yeah. It's so fucking hilarious. It's it's just baffling for the first half. Also, the one thing is so, one thing Jaws 4 actually does that thinking about it, the other Jaws movies, the other Jaws sequels don't do is that we don't see the shark in the opening attack, which actually shows a little bit of restraint. Like, I, I can imagine, like, if I went to see this in theaters, <laughs> seeing that opening, being like, all right, you know, there's a step in the right direction. <laughs> And then literally, like, after they're in the Bahamas for a little bit, they felt like they needed a shot of the shark heading towards the Bahamas. Which is so fucking stupid. It would take the shark, like, a full, like, two weeks to make it from Martha's Vineyard to the Bahamas, but it makes it in, like, the time they flew. 
And so the, then we just get this shot of the full body of the shark. And it just bright light. And it's just so awful. Like that's our, the first look of the shark. It's not during a thrilling attack scene. It's just sort of a reminder. Hey, the shark's coming. And it's like this really just terrible shot. And, it never, and that's about as good as the shark looks for the whole movie. That's, that's absolutely the best looking shot of the shark. And I want to get back to that in the finale because, oh my God. But, uh, oh my God, yeah. I, the, you're right. The first half does show a little restraint. And that reminded me of the psychological discussion we had about mm. the potential Jaws 2 could have had. Like if, they, like if there was a discussion about like, is there a shark? Is there not a shark? And then the second half, oh yeah, there is a shark. Now we need to like, now here's the, the thriller half, like the genuine action thriller half of the movie. It just yeah. is like no holds barred. And Jaws of Revenge kind of tries that, I think, but then it's, like, stupid about it. it yeah, it, it tries it, but fails it completely, fails miserably. Because the mystery of is there or isn't there a shark completely disappears about 30 minutes in. Um, because uh, Mike Brody sees the shark. Yep. And decides not to tell anyone. <laughs> They decide, let's keep it a secret. Like, don't tell my mom, because she's all fucked up. But she's the one that's been talking about it. Like, doesn't he think it's a little weird? Like, he's a little freaked out, but, he, like, he should have put the pieces together a little more. I mean, I get it. I guess no one really jumps to the conclusion that a shark is actually chasing us. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Like, he's clearly, like, bothered by the appearance of a shark there. And it's not like it just casually swims by. It lunges at the boat that they're on. Mm -hmm. Specifically at him. Yeah, and so it's like, whoa, that's that's a weird coincidence. And completely ignores his Rasta man partner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, what, what's that that guy's name? It's uh, Mario Van Peebles. Yeah, that, his yeah. accent is like that's that's. There's no way that's a real accent. It's right? not. That's not his real voice. Okay. Because that that is like really bad. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. But anyways, like. Yeah, so that must have gone through his mind at some point. And the movie's not, clearly not up to the task of, like, portraying this. Like, a man, like, having to work that out in his mind. Yeah. But, like, there, there, there's ways to go about this where it's a fun slasher movie, like Jaws 2 could have been. But What's they, the one it's thing, so dumb. One thing where this movie really fails, it, it fails in being a slasher movie entirely because only two people die. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, yeah. Which, and I mean, the problem is, like, we talked about, there's a, like, I said the opening was decent as an opener. And then you kind of just get the next, like, I don't know, like, a, a huge chunk of this movie is just character moments that are really fucking boring. And I get it trying to build up these characters and make, it's trying to do the Jaws thing of, like, making these characters feel human, but it doesn't know how to meld that with a shark attack plot at all. Mm -hmm. in the way Jaws did so masterfully. And instead, so we just have these two completely disconnected storylines that come together only in like the last 20 minutes of the movie. So you get like this whole middle that's like fucking boring as shit. Yeah, I had completely forgotten about how long the movie feels. It's only 90 minutes. Yeah, it's 90 fucking minutes, and it feels like a three-hour movie. Yeah, and like an hour of it, there's nothing but character stuff. There's glimpses of the shark. There's the part where the shark jumps out of the water and attacks the boat for a second. But like mm. just a second, and then it goes away. Mm. And then the rest is, is nothing. And there's, there's nothing. one scene where it chases Michael in when he's in like the submarine thing. Oh, fuck, I forgot about that. But it's, and it's supposed so to be like thrilling, but it's, so, it's fucking boring. And, I mean, we get way too into, like, the lives of all these characters. Like, we did not need to know all this. Yeah, and none of it, it's not like it all comes to a head in a thrilling conclusion or anything like that. Mm. And the, yeah. the action finale, if you want to call it that, only involves four of the characters. It doesn't involve, yeah. like, all the, their spouses. They're not protecting the entire town. It's just, it's, this is going to sound weird. It's just going after the Brodies. And mm. so the idea of, of uh, Mama Brody going out into the ocean and just facing the shark. Okay, whatever. If this is your premise, I, I, I get that character decision, so yeah. to speak. But it's not like 
we needed to see all the rest of this pre-established character development, quote unquote. Beforehand. I almost wonder if uh, they the intention was to keep the focus specifically on Ellen Brody, and then they kind of realized Elaine, like Gary, couldn't carry all this, so they had to add like all this other stuff just to give the movie some sort of weight. Because you really, because you really can't carry this movie. Um, they like even like when scenes cut away to her, it's like really, it's it's kind of surprising that like she's supposed to be the main character, and yet, like she almost feels like an afterthought in a lot, a lot of the movie. Like she's kind of just there. Mm-hmm. She has like a dream where she imagines being attacked by a shark, and she's constantly there's that really awkward moment where she's building a sandcastle, and then like the moment the water touches her feet, she kind of has like a fucking flashback. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like it's done so ham-fistedly it's just it's bizarre and i want to mention i just want to bring up the director the director of this movie is joseph Sargent, who directed white lightning colossus the forbidden project which is a movie i really like and the take the original taking of pelham one two three so he's a he's a competent director like he's all right but he'd only but like at some point, he started doing mostly TV work and then was brought out of TV to make this. Oh, I, I like that original taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. Well, I like both, but yeah, yeah, that, that's a solid little action movie. He, he made a handful of decent movies, and it's just kind of... Sh- I think, the, like I said, but I can see a director at work here, like more so than in the last two movies. Like, especially Jaws 3, where all the shots in that movie feel economical like just you know let's get this shot done as quickly as possible and with the least amount of effort this movie has like a lot of long takes it like tries to use blocking in interesting ways it plays with the environment really interestingly it just the problem is it all hinges on a really shitty premise and then totally collapses under the weight of terrible special effects uh and the the entire cast of the movie like this is this really bothered me on rewatching it is just like mm. the climax only focuses on four characters and they're all thrown together it's not like they built up to this they're thrown together to save Mama Brody and mm. none of what happened before it doesn't build up like their their character arcs it doesn't build up anything prior to that it's like the rest of the movie is superfluous. Yeah. And that really bugged me. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, none of it matters. Like, fucking, all right, so let's just say Michael Caine's in this movie. Um, and it's easily the best part of the movie. Like, for oh, whatever yeah. reason, he decided to actually turn in a performance <laughs> in fucking Jaws the Revenge. <laughs> uh, and there's, like, this whole subplot of him. Like, he's, he starts taking... Uh, Ellen Brody out on a date on dates, and like we don't know if he has like duplicitous motives. Like he he flies airplanes for tourists, but he's also like a huge gambling addict and might owe people like tons of money. Um, so we don't know like what exactly his motives are for dating um, Ellen Brody, and then it's just all completely dropped. Yeah, like once we get into the final act, like it goes nowhere. And it's also, just, it's, in the novelization, apparently there was going to be a bit where he, like, flies money for federal agents, and he, like, like dirty money. And so when he says, like, in the finale, like, oh, what do you do when you're not fly, flying uh, people? He's like, oh, I, I deliver laundry. Like, it's mm-hmm. laundered money he's talking about. Oh, yeah. But that still doesn't, doesn't do yeah, anything. Yeah, even then, like, that wouldn't tie into the climax. Yeah. I mean, it'd be one thing if he was, like, laundering money. Like, the thing this movie's missing that all the other Jaws films have, which I, I'm not saying it needs it, but maybe it would have helped with this movie, is it doesn't have a Mayor Vaughn-type character. There's no character, like, trying to keep the beaches open for, like, his own personal gain. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So maybe if, like, these agents, like, thought that the shark would somehow fuck up their money laundering scheme, like, that could have been an interesting plot element. But, no. It just, it, it really is, it, it adds up to nothing. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, okay. 
there's some some quotes that I have uh, back mm -hmm. to the opening of the movie after uh, Sean dies. And so uh, Mike's daughter says, Uncle Sean is dead, you know. Do you think he'll ever come back? And it's just like, what the... F I, I get kids don't, like... They mm -hmm. can't conceptualize what death means at, at that young of an age. But, like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, yeah. That's such a weird line of dialogue in any movie at any point in time what is that and it's not like this movie's like a great exploration of like a pe people dealing with trauma <laughs> like uh it, it is a real awkward a lot of the stuff the little girl does is very just kind of thrown in um, but she feels like a real kid honestly she feels real than most of the other actors in this film yeah um and she was played by the little girl who voiced Ducky in the uh, Land Before Time film. Oh, that's nice. Um, we I probably shouldn't go into her life. Uh, I would suggest Googling that after listening to this because you won't. You'll be a little angry. Oh, oh no. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so check that out after listening to our <laughs> stupid show about Jaws 4 and then hate humanity. Oh. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of. I wrote that. I only the only other line I've written down is uh, there's a part where they have to land the plane on the water, and uh, they're like, "Quick, we got to get out of this plane and get to the boat." And Mario Van Peebles goes, "The shark is attracted to the electromagnetic impulses of the plane." I'm like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> like, what does that mean?" <laughs> Like, why is it? But, what? Like, who came up with this? Like, no, it's not. And also, in a movie where we firmly established that this shark is out for revenge. It's not like a, it's not like the first movie where the shark was just, like, a monster. So, like, it could be, like, tricked in certain ways. Like, this is a plotting shark. So it's not like and, that would even matter. Yeah, it's just a bizarre line. Oh, my cat's here. What does your cat think of Jaws the Revenge? I don't know. He didn't watch it. This cat does watch television, though, which is bizarre. I've never seen a cat do that. Okay. Uh -huh. Interesting. But he's an asshole who won't just shut the fuck up. Okay. So I have, I have a couple more things I, I jotted down because this movie is, is perplexing mm. in its existence and endlessly fascinating by the last half. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, we already brought up the character, like, the romantic argument that turns romantic, and it, it's so, like, forced and awkward. And all the character interactions in this movie are awkward. Oh, all yeah. of them. Uh, oh, I really like the scene when Mike starts running along the beach, and his wife's like, where are you going? And he's like, nowhere! And then they just cut back to the, the funeral home. Yeah. And it's just like, what the... F what? It, yeah. What? <laughs> um, Oh, and this legitimately aggravated me, where they try to re redo their own rendition of the dinner scene from Jaws. Oh, God, yeah, that the was the worst. Girl. I was like, fuck you. Fuck, go fuck yourself. Do you understand mm -hmm. what was required to pull off that scene? They don't. Mm -hmm. And it, it just comes across as cheap. This whole yeah. movie comes across as fucking cheap. Trying to recapture something that just can't be recaptured. It's like if they tried to do an Indian, like an Indianapolis scene in the plane. Oh yeah. They talked about like Amelia Earhart. Yeah, yeah. Hoagie, Michael Caine's <laughs> character once dated Amelia Earhart, and he knows what happened to her, and it was sharks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. Fucking bull ass. Um, that would have made this movie amazing. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing I want to say one. Other positive I'd like to point out of this movie, which this will be shocking, but the score in this movie actually is all right. You know what? It is. Like, it helps carry a lot of things that it really... Like, it's doing most of the work in a lot of these scenes. It does, like, a weird kind of, like, like remix of the original film score. And, it, and also, there's a couple moments in it that sound like Deep Blue Sea, which is weird. Like, I wonder if they... they 
they watched Jaws the Revenge before making Deep Blue Sea, and Rennie Harlan was like, do that. Well, Deep Blue Sea came out like, let's see, when did Jaws Revenge come out? It came out like 80-something, right? 86, I think. Maybe 87. Yeah. Deep Blue Sea came out like 10 years after that. Yeah, more than 10 years. Right. So, uh, Deep Blue Sea is a far better movie than any of oh, the yeah. Jaws sequels. So yeah, Deep sure Blue Sea watch that. is like really the direction the Jaws film should have gone if they just kept getting dumber. So, it, it's the best Jaws sequel. There you go. Yeah, and yeah, I guess. Mm. Fucking movies. One more thing. Um, Mike Brody is played by the Last Starfighter, which is a really great '80s movie. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> it was bothering me the whole fucking movie. I'm like, where the fuck is he from? And then I had to look it up. I'm like, holy shit, it's the Last Starfighter. Small world. So, yep, his career didn't go very far. Oh, poor guy. He was also in Halloween 2. Oh, so shit. So he did another shitty horror sequel. That's right. Anyway, um, the last 20 minutes of this movie is completely baffling. <laughs> but they're the best part of the movie to me. Because oh, yeah. I cannot believe that this, this got made. Yeah. By human hands. Okay. Well, do you want to know what movie this reminds me of? What? When it comes to the ending? The the Fantastic Four reboot that happened a couple of years ago. Did you ever see that? I did, and the ending is also the worst part of that movie. Yeah, but that's also the thing where, like, the beginning, like, it's a it's got a very shaky premise, and kind of like a bad. It just wasn't smart in how it set up the movie, and so that kind of hangs over the whole thing. But the way it's the the beginning of the movie is actually all right. Then it really drags in the middle, and then the ending is completely incomprehensible. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I guess it is kind of similar. And both of these movies were studio-mandated films, so that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, so maybe don't do that. Yeah, maybe stop. <laughs> Sometimes the Jaws film stopped. Something. The Jaws film stopped. Maybe the Fantastic Four films can stop. At least until you get someone with like a vision for them. Yes. And then let them do that, even if it's not a good idea, like, or at least good for the Fantastic Four, like, brand. Maybe they can make a good movie mm. out of it. Uh, or, just, or just don't make it. Or, or just don't make it, yeah. Don't make it. Okay, okay so the, the second kill in the movie comes two years after the movie starts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with, uh, Mike's daughter goes to the banana boat, and they're speeding through the bay. And then the shark jumps out of the water and barely misses the little girl. And it, it almost swallows this woman behind her hole and mm. then just kind of latches on her. And then uh, she screams. They cut back to screaming people. They cut back to the woman and she's dead immediately. And she gets dragged under the water. And then yeah, the jaws, geyser of blood starts gushing up. Yep. And really awkward death scene because everything in this movie is played really awkwardly, unintentionally. I, I, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> that all the deaths are really awkward. The two deaths are really awkward. Yes. Uh, and then when Mama Brody goes out into the ocean, it's, it's not thrilling or tragic like it should be. And uh, all the people go after her and they set up these weird, like, stakes, I guess. Um, it's just, it's so bizarre. Well, one thing is, first of all, how the fuck did she learn to drive a boat like that? Like, that's a boat, like, at least a three-person crewed boat. <laughs> like, I get that she's, like, determined, but, like, she needs help. Yeah, that's physically impossible. Yeah. Then, also, one thing, the sharks, we, so you talk about the shark lunging out of the water. This shark, like, flies. <laughs> <laughs> like the way they, the, however they set it up on whatever gurney they had, like they had the balance all off. So whenever they wanted to lift the shark out of the water, it's like whole middle would come out. So it's like it's like side fins are like in the air flapping, and it just looks super awkward. It looks so bad. <laughs> it's it's fucking bizarre how bad it is, and it like literally looks like it's flying on top of the water almost. Um, and it just jerks at, like, too slow a motion. It's really bad. Then on top of that, so then uh, Mike Brody and Mario Van Peebles 
decide they have to go out and they have to go get Ellen Brody after Mike has a fight with his wife because he didn't tell him about the shark. And I don't know if that's ever resolved. It's not. It's like, not she's just, resolved. like, really angry. Yeah, and she is, like, like that's a divorce in the making sort of yell. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's serious. And she was, like, <laughs> fucking losing it. Yeah. And nothing comes of it at all. No, no, it, it's just almost completely free. Like, he doesn't even notice it in the moment. Like, which is a good hint that they're probably going to get divorced. Like, he's not even, he's like, wait, I gotta, where's my mom? I gotta go. And she's like, but you didn't tell us. He's like, yeah, but I gotta go. <laughs> and it's so, but so they take like a little fucking motorboat out. Like, are you fucking high? Like, that boat's not going to make it. Or like, they thought like it. So then they, like, like they just. Not only that, but they're aware that the shark wants revenge now. So yeah. if Mike goes out in that little boat, he's dead. He's yeah. dead before he reaches his mom. And then even if he did, like, even if he did, like, it would take them, like, like, a full day, and she would have to, like, stop for them to catch up. And they're just lucky they happen to run into Michael Caine, who then offers to fly them out there. Oh, and I want to give a shout-out to Michael Caine for mm. being unable to receive his Academy Award win while mm-hmm. reshooting the ending of Jaws of the Revenge. Yeah, because we'll talk about the reshoots in a moment. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's, um, it's all amazing by this point. You know, yeah, like right, at, right when they run into them, right after the banana boat attack. Every time I say that, I just want to start singing the banana boat song. Um, but right after that attack, uh, like the whole movie goes off the rails. It nosedives so, incomprehensibly. Honestly, check out the last 20 minutes of this movie. It's unbelievable. Um, so they take Michael Caine's plane out, and <laughs> there's an actual effect of them landing that plane on the water, you know? Yeah, and that, that looks all right. And it's real, and, like, the plane gets really fucked up. It's kind of bizarre to see. Like, it lo- almost looks like an accident. Um, and, <laughs> they just uh, fucked up the plane, and they're like, oh, we weren't supposed to do that. We need to reshoot that a couple times. I don't know if we like, got no, it. we can't. We fucking, we lost the plane. Um, <laughs> so the plane quickly starts sinking, and uh, Mike Brody, the last starfighter, and Morgan Van Peebles uh, swim to Ellen Brody's boat. And first of all, they saw the shark, but then they lost sight of it at some point, which I don't know how the fuck that happened, but whatever. Because um, the, bo- yeah, the water is in the bottom. What? They just say they lose sight of it. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah. I guess you did. But the waters of the Bahamas are so clear. Like, you could see anything. Especially a shark that big. So it's, like, bizarre whenever the shark, like, sneaks up on people. Because it really shouldn't. Um, and then the shark pops out of the water and attacks Michael Caine's plane while Michael Caine's still in it. And Michael Caine has the best delivery. <laughs> Uh, like he's like yelling some shit over to the boat, and the shark pops out. Michael Cage goes, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> and then gets back into the plane, and he's dragged underwater, and we he, like everyone thinks he's dead. And so there's like this moment where we're like, "Holy shit!" They just killed Michael Caine. And then Michael Caine's like, "Nope, I made it!" And he's climbing over the side of the boat, and possibly the biggest blooper in film history. Continuity wise, like it's so blatant, it's like Ed Wood level. Is that he's supposed to have been dragged underwater? He climbs over the boat and his shirt is completely dry. His shirt and pants are completely dry. All that's wet are, is his hair. Like it's like holy shit. And like to think, you might think, oh, you only know this just because we have like the HD version. Apparently, when this movie was first screened for critics, Roger Ebert, of all people, actually shouted out in the theater, his shirt is dry. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I honestly think I've read, like, like, back when I was a kid, I used to read books on, like, you know, movie mistakes and stuff like that. This was always listed as one of the biggest mistakes ever, like, that shot of, like, going from the ocean to suddenly being completely dry on land. It's it's fucking hysterical. Oh, it's so good. Um, but what that move, what the movie does right there, it, it does a fake out death, and it does it again, mm. like five minutes later, mm. with Mario Van Peebles. But 
you see Mario Van Peebles get attacked, like grabbed viciously, right. ripped from the the bow of the boat, and dragged underwater. And can I? Can blood I? Blood everywhere. Can I ask you first before like we get into that death? Totally. What the fuck are they trying to do? I to this day I have no idea. They explain something, mm. but it doesn't. It's like the sentences don't connect properly, or maybe yeah. they're edited incorrectly together. Like I know they're trying to attach something to the shark, <laughs> but they already have another thing attached to the shark that like can trace its like heartbeat somehow, and that's how they trace the shark. And then Marvin Peoples has to stab it with something else, and that's what gets him quote unquote killed. Um where yet like the shark basically rips into him and drags him under. And we see the shark just dragging him to his death. And also watch that scene. If you watch, if you go frame by frame you can actually see the gurney the shark is on in one of the frames. Um it's really it's a really bad effect. Uh and he's dead. I mean the thing is he died but test audiences didn't like that, so they brought him back. <laughs> so fucking stupid. But we'll get to that. I mean, because like, literally, like, it's hard to keep up with just how incomprehensible this ending is. So, so somehow they've attached something to the shark that then like shocks it and makes it jump out of the water. I really don't know what's happening. Uh, something about the flashing light. Like triggers something yeah. in the shark, and that makes it jump up. I guess because this shark and really roar. likes to jump and, <laughs> and roar. roar. The and shark roar. roars like a dinosaur, and <laughs> sharks don't have lungs, so they they can't roar. So, um, yeah. So fuck that logic. I mean, it's it's embarrassing just watching, and it's the effect of the, on that shark looks so bad. It's just, you keep seeing it, and they keep coming back to it, and it's going, Rrrr. and then, all right, then Ellen Brody is, like, having flashbacks to moments she wasn't present for. <laughs> like, she sees the banana boat attack in a flashback, but then she sees the death of Sean, which she wasn't there for, and then she flashes back to Brody killing the first shark in the original Jaws. <laughs> I never understood and, this. Like, it's so weird. I honestly think it was a product of she's supposed to be kind of, like, losing it at this point, and so, she, like, she's supposed to be driven, kind of like how Quint is, like, driven by, like, this unstoppable quench to kill the shark, but she couldn't really carry it. So they had to intersplice these other shots to remind you of what her motivation is, because you don't see it on her face. I fully believe that, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, and then, all right, and then here's where the movie really goes off the rails. Which is that right in the flashback where Chief Brody says, smile, you son of a bitch. You know, the famous line. Mm -hmm. We cut to Ellen Brody, who kind of makes like a jerking face. <laughs> like she's thrust, like somehow she's thrusting the boat forward, which doesn't make sense. Somehow the shark has jumped out of the water right in front of the boat. And the front of the boat stabs the shark. <laughs> now, here's where the movie goes in two completely different directions. Because in the original ending, the shark is just stabbed to death. And its body kind of lunges forward and it tears apart the boat as it's dying. And then it sinks. Yeah. Um, and when it gets stabbed by the boat, the film quality drops significantly. I mm. don't know what happened. It's like they shot the rest on like 16 millimeter and then the rest, and then that shot like on 8 millimeter and then they <laughs> scratched it up. I think you can only find, because I don't own Jaws 4 on DVD or Blu ray. Um, but uh, I think the only surviving images of that, because that was, ending was cut, but they've shown it on TV. Like AMC, the AMC version of Jaws The Revenge actually shows this ending. But I don't think it's ever been cleaned up like the other footage probably has been over the years. Yeah. So that's probably got something to do with it. So this ending was, didn't test well because audiences didn't understand what was happening. <laughs> Obviously. 
So the Universal Executives decided to make an ending even more incomprehensible, which is that the shark gets stabbed and then it randomly blows up. <laughs> like, it just blows up. And watch it frame by frame. It's the worst model shot I've ever seen in any movie. Like, it almost looks like something Red Letter Media would do. But, like, the gag that Red Letter Media would have would be that it's so bad. Like, <laughs> it's like a toy shark just blowing up. And then the boat also is destroyed in the explosion. Yeah, and they show the, the, the explosion, like, five times. Like, boom, boom. Yeah, because, like, boom. Oh, well, if they didn't, you wouldn't know what the fuck just happened. <laughs> Um, oh, and, and they recycle then, footage from Jaws. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. They recycle footage from Jaws, which makes the whole thing even more confusing because we were just having flashbacks to Jaws. But then they actually reuse footage from Jaws. <laughs> so, like, it's really confusing continuity-wise. And it's, like, literally the exact same shot of the shark dying underwater and just floating to the bottom. Um... It's a, just a series of poor decisions. And then, all right, on top of that, so then they had to do reshoots because the audience got really upset that Mario Van Peebles died. So they had to reshoot the ending to bring him back. And it is shot on, like, a, the studio back lot in a tank. And you can totally tell the background is just painted like a sky color. And you can actually see the waves of the water hitting the wall. Wow. Like, if you really look, you can tell it's a fake set. It's like almost like it's the fucking Truman Show. <laughs> like, the Truman Show looks better because you, you can't tell it's a wall until he actually hits it. So, and then Mario Van Peebles just comes back and they're like, oh my god, you're alive? And then he says something in a Rastafarian accent that I couldn't make out. And then the movie's over. <laughs> Yeah, like two minutes later, it's like, all right, bye, come back and visit. We'll visit you next time. And then um, yeah. they, they fly away, credits roll, and you're just like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Like, that's the end? <laughs> I think the only more abrupt ending I've ever seen to a movie is in Transformers 3. The last hour of that movie is nonstop Bayhem. Mm. And regardless of your opinions on how successful that movie is, at what it's trying to do with Bayhem. Uh, after Optimus Prime kills Mega, decapitates Megatron, mm -hmm. and then murders the villain who's begging for his life on his No, knees. Optimus! Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Watch that. Oh. Watch the last hour of that movie. Um, and then 10 seconds later, Optimus gives a speech about America and like hope and humanity, and then credits Lincoln Park theme, and you're like, whoa, what? Yeah. <laughs> what just happened? That's the only more abrupt ending I can think of. I've seen some pretty, but I've seen some fucking shit movies over the years. So there are a lot of movies that just end, especially if you watch like really shitty monster movies. But uh, yeah, this is this is all just baffling. And this this was released by Universal, <laughs> and was pretty much the worst film of the year on like every critic's list. So, uh, but that wasn't going to stop Universal from making. Because guess what? Like, Jaws 4 actually made money. Like, didn't do as well as the others, of course, but it actually made money. And the mm -hmm. only reason Universal's never made a sequel to Jaws since Jaws 4 is because Steven Spielberg, based, after seeing Jaws 4 and how bad it was, <laughs> felt that if they kept making sequels, it would hurt the original. And basically went to Universal and said, I will never make another movie for this studio if you make another Jaws movie. And that's why there's never been another Jaws sequel and there's never been a Jaws remake. God bless Steven Spielberg. Yeah, because he, bas he basically put his foot down and was like, fuck you. I'm never... Don't do this anymore. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. And that's what... That's how the Jaws series came to an end. No, uh, Jaws 19. Nope. Never made it that far. Yeah. Oh shit, what a fucking movie. Yeah. Just, uh... 
Just watch, just honestly, because like this movie's really fucking boring, but you have to see the last 20 minutes of it. It's just, it's amazing. And it doesn't, it makes even less sense in context. <laughs> yeah, you're better off watching it without the context. Yeah. For entertainment value. Um, I, I thought of uh, canon films while watching this one. Oh, you know, yeah. They just pump out a really cheap schlock. In like six months, and then release it within the same time frame. Yeah, that that's the exact feeling I got. And this movie is only made in nine months, like written, mm. produced, directed. Yeah. And this, I mean, this does kind of feel like when Canon was towards the end, and they were making like Superman four and you know Masters of the Universe, where like everything was just bad. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, this does have a, have a Canon feel to it. They, although Canon probably would have made a more interesting film. Like, they would have added, like, some subplot involving drug dealers or something. <laughs> Chuck Norris versus Jaws. Oh, fuck yeah. That's a fun, like, five-minute short film. Yeah, there's something that, like, I could watch a fake trailer for. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, never, ever check out. Yeah, so. And that's, that's Jaws the Revenge. Nope, that's it. That's how it all ends. Yep. Uh, the Although, thrilling conclusion. Some 30 years later, I guess. My time and my dates are probably off. Uh, the movie Piranha 3D came out. And if you see that movie, Richard Dreyfus is in it. And he's in the opening scene. And he gets killed by the piranhas. And his character's name is Matt Hooper. So it's Piranha 3D is, might be the spiritual successor to the Jaws franchise. I don't want that to be the case either. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, Matt. So, this is Jaws. This yeah. is the legacy. The legacy of Jaws 1, 2, 3, 4. And here's, here's the thing. I've seen sequels that are so bad, they really have hurt the original film. Like, they kind of affect the specialness of an original movie. Like, I understand, I think the Hangover sequels are so bad, they've actually ruined the first Hangover movie. Like, there's almost nothing worth revisiting in it. I can, I can kind of agree with that. Those um, are really bad. But, these sequels are as bad as we've described them. <laughs> and they haven't, they haven't hurt the original Jaws at all. Like, there, there's no damage has been done to the original film. Do you think that's just because Jaws is that fucking good? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like how Godfather 3 couldn't ruin Godfathers 1 and 2. Although Godfather 3 kind of fucks up a little bit of Godfather 2, but that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, just to think about that. I mean, literally, like it, it, these movies, these shitty sequels don't even put a dent in the original films. Like, even if they remake it one day, which I'm sure they will, because everything gets remade. Like the only thing that'll ever stop this movie from getting remade will be the collapse of the modern studio, which could happen any time now. <laughs> and but so long as like they keep knocking out reboots, like the moment Spielberg either relents or just you know unfortunately passes away, um, they will do a Jaws reboot. Oof. Ah, uh, what's it even gonna look like? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, it'll be it. It'll probably be something really generic. Like every now and then, you get a franchise where, like, you give it to the right person, and they can make something special out of something. Like you never really thought. Like I never thought I wanted to see another Judge Dredd movie, and then Dredd was amazing. I never thought, you know, a fucking Twenty One Jump Street movie would be good, because Twenty One Jump Street wasn't even good. And then they made a movie out of it, and they ended up making a really fucking funny movie. Like, there's just some films where you don't really think, like, if you get, like, sometimes, you know, you get lucky, and you give the movie to the right person, and they make a decent movie. But more often than not, they give it to a very generic filmmaker who will just turn in a very by-the-numbers movie. Oh my god, do you remember the Ben-Hur remake? Oh yeah. That came out 100 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. 
Like that. It'll be like that. And that guy almost kind of, I mean, that guy was slated to do a Moby Dick adaptation at one point. <laughs> the guy who directed Ben Hur. Um, and, wow. th- and that's kind of like, you know, Jaws is kind of the spiritual successor to Moby Dick in some ways. And Moby Dick's also my favorite book. So that almost happened. We almost got a really generic Moby Dick movie, which I'm also sure we'll have. I, actually, we did. We had that fucking, that Moby Dick movie without Moby Dick in it. Oh, in the heart of the sea. Yeah. Like, who the fuck thought that was a good idea? Ron Howard. I guess. Hopefully he's not taking over a franchise film some, from some really talented, young, up-and-coming directors. Yeah, that'd be weird. That'd be just a really bad decision. Yeah. It almost makes me regret that a major studio now owns one of my favorite franchises. <laughs> but I'm sure something like that would never happen in Hollywood. Bum, 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 ba-da-dum, bum, ba-da-dum, bum, bum, uh, fuck bum, movies. Bum, bum, fuck Hollywood. Bum, bum, bum. So thank you, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sorry, fuck. Steven Spielberg, that you inadvertently made Modern Hollywood, but thank you for stopping the Jaws sequels from getting made. Oh, shit. Okay, Matt. Thank you for joining me on this Jaws retrospective. This was a whole lot of fun. We got to do another one at some point. Yeah, we got to do something. Oh, yeah, AVP. Yeah, we're doing the AVP films and then Predator, hopefully. Fuck yeah. We got, like, we literally have over a year to do those, yep. so we'll probably sprinkle some other stuff in between. Oh, yeah. I've got some ideas. Oh, fuck yeah. I might just put, like, Twitter polls up. Yeah. Any shit people are interested in. Uh, any final thoughts on Jaws, besides it both creating and ruining Hollywood? Um, Jaws is the greatest film of all time. So check it out. And if you don't like it, you can fuck off, Sean. <laughs> I'm gonna tag him on this. You should. He won't listen, but you should. <laughs> All right. I just, I, I just want to say, since I know Sean will listen to this, that he said that the the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were totally justified. He told me in private. So thanks, Sean. He's cool with that now. <laughs> Matt. Well, now, now we're going to find out if he listens to it. Because <laughs> I will get a message. I don't know if you want to tell people where they can find you after that. Go <laughs> ahead. I'm on Emperor OTN at Twitter.com. Follow me for more irreverent shit like that. <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter at D-E-W-G-O Waffles. President Diego is the handle. Uh, check out all my stuff on audiences everywhere. The Waffle Press. Uh, other places, just follow my Twitter. Everything will be available there. Um, we have a very cool thing coming out that or that will have come out for Shark Week. I don't think I can announce it at the time of this recording, but I'll just probably add something at the end of this. Uh, a very cool thing for Shark Week that I'm really looking forward to sharing with everyone. Uh, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, like, subscribe if you didn't like, like, subscribe anyways because you might find something you do like Uh, we have been professionally unprofessional enjoy your week of sharks